There seems to come a time in every developer's life where he needs to communicate with a SOAP API, where we need to take our young Ruby code and venture out into a world designed for large .NET and Java frameworks. Thankfully, Sevo can help out with this. This is a Ruby gem by Daniel Harrington that provides a nice Ruby interface for communicating with a SOAP API. Here, let me show you how it works. I have an application here where I want to gather information given a zip code. For example, if I enter in a zip code here and then hit lookup, I'm going to get information back, but you can see right now it's not yet working. I have placeholders here for information, but nothing is presented because I need to communicate with an external web service and gather these details given a zip code. To accomplish this, I'm going to use a web service x.net. This is a SOAP API for providing a lot of useful information such as uh, stock quotes, currency conversion weather, and a whole lot more. So I'm going to use this to fetch information about a given zip code. If I go under the lookup data section, you can see I have US zip code information where I have a nice interface for getting information based off of a zip code. So you can see if I type one in here, hit invoke, we get back details about that given zip code. Yay! Now before you jump right into using a SOAP API in your application, it's a good idea to experiment with it a little bit to make sure it works the way you expect it to. And we can do that using SOAP UI. So I will download this here. Now once you finish installing it, it should look something like this. Well, the first step is to add a new project here by clicking the button on the top left. And then we need to enter in a WSDL URL into here. And you can see if we go to that zip code API page, there's a WSDL URL right here for us to use. And so I'll just paste that in here. Now a WSDL is sort of like a blueprint telling us what actions are available that we can call on the SOAP API. You can see we get various actions here. Now the one we want is the get info by zip. And so I can add a new request here. And you can see that this shows us the XML that's required for making the request. And this is the important information that we need to get from SOAP UI so that we can compare it to Sevo as we build it into our Rails application. But we can try filling in this question mark with an address and then click on the green arrow here to run it. And then we should get a response back containing that information and we do. So now we can start integrating this into our Rails application. Let's first add the Sevo gem to our gem file. And then we run the bundle command to install it. Now first I'm going to experiment with this gem a little bit in the Rails console to give you a better idea of how it works. The first thing we need to do is to set up a Sevon client. And then just call new on this and pass in the URL to our WSDL file. Now you can also provide a block here if you want to do additional configuration, but this will work for us here. Now we can call client.wsdl.soapactions and that'll give us a nice list of actions that we can execute on this API. And you can see we have the get info by zip action, which is just what we want. And notice that Sevo converted it to underscores for us. Now you can make a request by calling client.request, and you can pass in the name of the action here, such as get info by zip. But you can also pass in an optional namespace here as the first argument. And if you look at the XML generated by SOAP UI, you can see that the web namespace is used. So I will add that web namespace here. And then at the end of this, I want to add some additional options. Now you could also pass a block into here, but here I'll just add a body option in line. And this takes a hash. And this is where we pass in the additional tags, which include the arguments. So we can pass in us zip into here. So let's enter that us zip argument into here, 90210, and close off the hash and try this out. Now, as you can see, this outputs a lot of detail, and normally this outputs to your development log file. So if you're debugging SOAP in a Rails app, you can look inside of there. But the important bits are the uh, request XML and the response XML. And as you can see, the response, it doesn't really contain the information that we want. It doesn't contain our city or state and so on. So something's wrong with our request. And the problem here in this case is that the name of our US zip code is incorrect because it's supposed to capitalize US and is case sensitive. So we need to fix this. Now Sevel by default does lower camel case, which means it's going to lowercase the first word when a symbol is passed. But you can pass in a string if you need to customize the casing. So instead of the request body that we send in, let's just use a string here instead of a symbol to specify the casing of US zip. I'll fall back to an old style hash, submit this, and then 
Let's see the XML response that we get here. You can see it includes all the information about that zip code. So it looks like it worked. Now that command returns a response object, so let me just set that to variable here, and I can use the underscore on the console to reference the returned object of the last command. Now I can call to hash on this response, which will return a nice Ruby hash that is easy for me to parse. Now you can see the information we want here is pretty deeply nested into this hash, but it'll work for us here. So now that we have an idea of how Cevon works, let's add it to our Rails app. So inside of my Rails app, I have this zip code model. It's not an active record model, just a simple Ruby class. It has some attributes here. And when the object gets instantiated, given a zip code, I want to set those attributes using our SOAP API. Now, because I already walked you through this in the console, I'm just going to paste in some code here. Basically, this does the same thing that we did in the console, where we create a new client, call request on that, with passing in the proper US zip code here that gets passed in the initialize method. And then we fetch the information using response to hash and go inside that deeply nested hash and then access our data here and set our attributes on our zip code model. So now let's give this a try. I'll enter in a zip code here, hit look up, and then it should fetch the information and it does, yay. Now don't forget to handle the case where there might be errors. For example, if we type in an invalid zip code here and try to look that up, we'll probably get an exception. And we do, it says nil, trying to access a hash because it's returning a response which doesn't have that deeply nested hash like we expect. One good idea is to make sure that the response returns successful. We can call success on the response object to make sure that's the case. And that just checks if the HTTP response was 200, okay but that's not going to help us here because uh, our given API here just returns an empty result, it's still successful, but doesn't give us the data we need. To help us out here, there's another method that Savon provides called toArray instead of toHash. And the nice thing about this is that it allows us to pass a, a list of arguments here that are the hash keys that we can go into. And this will return an empty array if that doesn't exist. So it won't raise an exception here. And we can call first because this is an array and that'll basically have the same effect except it won't raise an exception. Now, if that key isn't available, it will just return nil. So we can say if data and then just make sure that that exists. So now we can reload this page here and instead of getting an exception, we'll just get an empty result. Now you'll probably want to improve the user experience on error handling cases like this, but this will give you a good start. Now before I go, here are a couple of tips. One is that if you find yourself using strings a lot because the first word of the tag name happens to be capitalized, you may want to add this line of code to your application. This will use normal camel case instead of lower camel case because if your API uses that kind of casing, this might help so that you can use symbols instead of strings in your arguments. Now another tip is that you may want to cache the WSDL file locally instead of downloading it every time because it often doesn't change and you can pass a file path in here instead of a URL, and Sevon will read from that file instead of fetching it from the URL. Well, that wraps up our look into Sevon. As you can see, it makes it relatively easy to communicate with a SOAP API. Now, if you're using this, you might be interested in a couple of other related projects. One of these projects is Sevon Model, which provides a nice DSL for setting up the client inside of a class. I think this would work quite well inside of my zip code class and clean things up. The other project is Seval Spec, which can help in testing by mocking out the SOAP requests, like you can see here. Now I think this is fine for lower level tests, but I highly recommend you have some higher level integration tests which actually test hitting the true API. This way you really make sure that everything still works and if the API changes, it will actually break your application. And the VCR gem can help greatly with this. And that brings us to the pro episode for this week, which is on VCR. In that episode, I will show you how to test this application using VCR and also show you tips and tricks on how to improve your workflow and other features that VCR provides. It's a really great gem, perfect for any time you need to test an external web service. To watch that episode, just point your browser to railscast.com pro and sign up for $9 a month and you'll also gain access to all other pro and revised episodes.